How's it going today everybody? Today I got a video for my organic farmer. I'm still working for you Tom. I'm burning the midnight oil over here. This particular build is for my brother Keith who has just bought this bad boy. We're gonna hook him up today. Hey what's up everybody? This is just a quick video for Keith showing him how to light his new steam weed killer. It's also a steam cleaner but the purpose he's buying it for is to kill some weeds. In this video you will see how to adjust the pressure on a bypass valve configuration and you will see how to set the blowtorch at its maximum setting or it's actually called the Zeus torch but not for that okay so this is where we're at essentially we have the discharge valve which gives us our flow to the gun that will mostly be turned on just a little bit we have our bypass valve which dumps excess flow from the discharge back to the intake of the pump so that we're not just wasting water. And we have an overpressure valve here shoring up everything so we don't blow up this pump. We're gonna give this thing a try. We're gonna try and set the pressure right at about 130 PSI's. And then when the steam is activated, hopefully we'll be around 160 PSI's. Actually, the guy purchasing this from me is using it initially for killing weeds. So I think I'm just going to get it set for that first and get his demonstration underway. And we'll go from there. Alright fellas, in this section I'm going to show how to dial in the bypass valve. Essentially, what we're going to want to do is get the flow rate near to what we want. That's probably about the area we're gonna to wanna to start off at. Now that we've got the flow rate started, we have the bypass valve open all the way here. So when we turn on the pump, we're not gonna have any overpressure issues. It doesn't move at all. I'm going to close this somewhat. As I start to close this valve, the pressure is going to go up. We're going to try it right there. We've got 140 psi. The flow looks a little much. So now the pressure went up just a little bit. So I'm going to once you think you have the thing lit there's actually a whole other operating level to it so it's kind of tricky to get it on full blast some people don't realize there's a whole other level all right one thing to remember is you don't ever want to aim the gun down like that when you're lighting it because a large flame will come out of it so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the propane valve which is this one right here with the braided hose on it and we're going to turn it on very lightly just barely okay once you got a flame about that size you're going to want to adjust the air i'm going to let it heat up a second we're going to add fuel and then air we always add fuel first when we're adjusting the flame or else we could have a flame out scenario
asking me what's the flow rate of this thing. It's not going to be quite the same as this right here because the system's no longer at pressure. We would literally have to condense the steam to observe the actual output. But, uh, it's looking like about 30 to 60 liters an hour. Okay. Let's shut this poor thing down. Okay. Looks like I might have sprayed some water in there. There you have it, Keith. I'm going to send this thing preset the way it is. But when you go to adjust it, it's not so much this valve that you want to mess with. This is just a secondary flow rate valve. You could probably leave it just the way it is. It's this valve over here that's going to control your pressure. That motor's not even really all unhappy either. So we're good to go. I'm not seeing a water source for this puddle. I was spraying water on this thing earlier. We do not appear to have any leaks. We're good to go. I didn't have this closed. I think I just sprayed some water in it. But for the most part, see how much fuel we used in that little bit of time. I don't know how much of this ended up on camera. It was at 35.4, so we used 0.4 in that time. I don't know how much I trust that scale, to be honest with you. So, next step is we will be attaching this unit to a telescopic pole. I just wanted to show you how to light it off of the pole because a lot of my buyers use it both ways and it's really the same process. So, there you have it. That was the first test of the pump box and it uh, went very well. So happy. You see how well this thing runs when you don't got to watch me chase pumps. The bypass valve has saved the day. That's what we got. Now, when we go to kill weeds, we're going to hook this bad boy up. I will do a demonstration of that tomorrow morning. I just need to get this out there today because I told you I'd show you how to light this thing today, Keith. It's been a hot one, man. Busy and hot. As soon as the clouds hit, I come out here for you. All right, Keith, so I can't emphasize enough of learning the difference between lit and turned on full blast. The thing's so loud that a new user may think that you have it on the high setting with the torch, even though it's really not. It's, it's, it's definitely a learning curve, so with any luck, I think you'll be just fine as far as figuring it out right away. It's just kind of hard to describe it. It, it it'll sound like a jet engine like you've got it on full blast and there's no possible way it could get any louder or more powerful but i'm telling you once you learn how to dial it in without blowing it out there's a whole other level of operating power that you can get out of this thing it's like uh starts to sound like a rocket engine on you so there we have it keith i hope um you don't have any trouble figuring out what i meant by having it turned on and having it turned on high you're gonna think that it's on the highest setting but it's really not um it just takes a little practice getting it to that high point i do want you to be careful with lighting this thing do not hold it in the downward position like this when you first light it a large flame will come up the side of it and um be careful uh turning the valve on all the way you really only need to turn it See how it's that loud when it's just turned that much? That's about all we want right there to light it. The valve goes much higher because once you get it lit, it will take a lot of gas. And um, <clears throat> when you're killing weeds, I suggest you have this thing set on the highest possible setting that you can get it. It, it, it might take a couple of times to practice. It might go out on you the first few times, but 
You want as much hot water as possible. And in my experience, the hot water is more damaging than the steam itself. I've just been kind of testing here and there. And you can see it will completely kill a plant. It's not like a poison, though. You can't just spray it on the plant like you're applying poison. Um, look at it as a blanching process. You have to blanch the leaves. You want to burn the wax coating off of them and burst the cells on the inside. There's a whole other level to it, though. If you hang around a little bit longer, they say you can actually bake the seed bed or steam the, seam, the seed bed, and it will kill the seeds that are in the soil as well. I'm going to try that steam cone out on this area here tomorrow. See how I've done this area once before a couple of months back. The weeds do eventually come back, just like anything else. But um, if you hit it for a longer period, you can burst open all the seeds that are in the area and prolong it even further. I'm going to get this hooked up to the the wand for you tonight or the telescopic post that I have here. I got you the best one money could buy, brother. This was like 40 bucks, dude. Nice and sturdy fiberglass aluminum. That's going to hook on with a special bracket right in that direction there. Um, the, the handle does come off of this thing, but I didn't want to remove it in the event you found yourself wanting to use it to clean parts and stuff like that. All of my subscribers are basically gearheads. So I just thought I'd share with everyone how Keith rolls. Right on, brother. That is a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery. I am into it, bro. That is so cool, man. So there you have it, Keith Dog. You would definitely be able to clean this thing up if she ever got a little dusty and grimy with this steam gun. Keep the flame away from any rubber hoses and stuff for a long period of time. It's just like any torch. You can lick stuff with the flame without any damage. And um, believe it or not, the flame actually helps dry the work when you are doing steam cleaning. Uh, I steam cleaned some objects like this in the past. And it, the flame actually acts like a massive hair dryer. There, there's about... 4.5 cubic foot per minute of air flying through there at uh, 40 psi's which comes out to man probably 400 cubic foot per minute of air actually rushing through that thing at atmospheric pressure so there you have it Keith dog if you have any problems man I'm just a phone call away you got my number brother and I hope this thing solves your problem just remember it's not a poison it's a blanching process, so give it a little bit more time than you would a poison. You want to cook that plant, you know what I'm saying? And you don't got to worry about burning nothing with this thing. That's the cool part about it. Kill weeds on asphalt driveways and around ornamental landscaping things like lattice or mulch, gnomes, all that stuff, man. This thing's safe with all that. You're going to be just fine, brother. I really hope you enjoy the product. If the pump fails on you, just let me know. It's the same to any of my customers. I buy these things from China, guys. So to make it affordable, I'm taking a risk that I'm not going to throw on you. I will replace the pump if it blows up on you. It's the least I can do. It's the only way out of this. It's either that or we pay 200 bucks for a pump. It's 30 bucks or 200 So, And I build the $200 one. And that's just in parts. So here's what it is, man. I hope this works out for you, brother. Appreciate your business.